Um, I uh, here I, I have to mention that you work as a, as an accelerator in a startup uh, for startups, uh, and you're like a venture capitalist for for art market, uh, providing uh, the, the the initial funds and uh, given that you invest at a very early stage to the artist, let's say startup company. I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean sometimes I invest at a later stage. You know, I have, I have two hypotheses. I either invest early and, and oftentimes I invest after they've been with fancy galleries who have just completely messed it up. I mean, I think that the, the myth and, and something I've seen consistently is people will always point their fingers and say, this artist worked with Simkus and Claire. Now, first of all, they never worked with me, but if you go through any big gallery system or mid-sized gallery system and you look at what's happened to 90% of their artists from a market perspective, it's devastating. Uh, you can look at artists like Walid Beshti who've got resumes that are miraculously good, whose works are at the best galleries in the world, where if you look at their, their auction marks, they, they don't exist. Many artists, uh, amazing artists with some of the, the most respected gallerists in the world where they're selling the work for fifty, sixty thousand dollars and you can buy it at auction for two thousand. So and I think this is because many of the galleries have a very narrow way of distributing work. They find who the, the best collector is, the fanciest person. They build what I call narrow coalitions of support. And when you have a narrow coalition of support, you are required to essentially play a game consistently of smoke and mirrors of separating people out into segments saying this is good, but you're not building an authentic, diverse, broad base of support. You need much broader coalitions. In other words, you need to do business with people you don't like. I basically sell work based on one metric. I don't care who you are, price and volume. So when I manage an artist, I set a price. I say, how much work do I want to sell? And that's how I manage it. So whoever meets that criteria can buy the work. Galleries, if they have a hot artist, underprice the work dramatically. So really, whoever buys the work knows they're getting this much fat. So of course, there's a line around the block of people waiting to get the fat. And they then think, who's the best person? In other words, who's the person most unlikely to, 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 to monetize that fat, either because they're very rich and it doesn't make a difference to them, or because they're going to sort of pay a tax for that fat that they're getting in another way give some money to a museum that will, you know, click reaction to support an artist or, or buy another work that they don't really like from the gallerist. So I believe that through basic economic principles, just price and volume, you can manage essentially who buys and doesn't buy the work. So you have two conditions in the market. One, galleries underpricing the work of hot artists, because it's easy to sell when it's underpriced. You don't have to do that, much work. That creates rationing. That yeah, yes, you, you, you have, you, you, you have uh, it's easy. You've got a line around the block. You don't have to do work. You just take the phone call, send the invoices. You can be arrogant and stuff. But when you price it at market, it's much more difficult. Now, I have a, if you can bear with me, if your participants can bear with me, I have a, I, I kind of digress because I, 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 I have a voracious appetite for everything. That's and, great. That's great. <laughs> and... I watched recently a, a show from the 1970s, and this story is, is going to take five minutes, but I think it'll, it'll give you a perspective of how I feel about the art world and, and how the market dynamic is created. So I, Claudius, was a TV show in the 1970s about this great Caesar, Claudius, um, starred Jer Derek Jacoby. And Claudius was the last in the line of sort of the, the classical Caesars at the beginning of time. And he came after Caligula. And he was, a, he was a, an academic, an intellectual, but he was also uh, handicapped. He had a lisp. He, 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 they thought he was stupid. So they never killed him. They were like, well, he's, he, we don't need to kill him. He's not too bright. This Caesar, um, hello? Yes, someone shared so, so, the page. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you so much. Um, he, he was famous for conquering England, and the Romans, as you know, ran England for 300 years. He wrote the histories of the Carthaginian Wars, uh, which were quite unpopular because he was very favorable to the Carthaginians. But anyhow, when he became Caesar, it was a big problem in Rome. During the winter, the people of Rome would starve to death because there wasn't enough corn. The corn would come from Egypt, they'd put on a ship, come to Rome. In winter, the port would freeze. 
and they weren't able to get enough corn into the country. They needed to build a bigger port. So he called in the corn merchants. They came in their robes, their finery, the very rich. And he said, guys, I want you to build me a, a bigger winter port so we can get more grain from the Egyptians in winter because the Roman people are starving to death. They came back three weeks later and they said, it's going to take 10 years. It's going to cost 30 million sesterces. In other words, very expensive and too long. So Claudius was clever because he understood that the corn merchants benefited greatly from having the people of Rome starve in the winter because they could get a lot of money for the limited amount of corn they had. And he said to him, well, you know, this is bullshit because my uncle, Julius Caesar, called in the engineers, civil engineers, when, before he got killed and asked them for a plan. And they said it would take two years and only cost four million sesterces. And he said, if you don't go and build a bigger port and finance it yourselves, I'm going to chop your heads off. And, and, and that is essentially cultural production today. It is the corn in winter in Rome coming from Egypt. It benefits the incumbent players to have the corn be rationed. It benefits uh, the, the incumbents that the points of distribution, essentially the port through, in winter through which corn is distributed is small and tight. I want to open that up more corn for more people. There's great art today. Artists are communicating with each other. They're seeing work globally. They, they are exposed to the best talents in the world. They're taught by people like you in Turkey who are reaching out to the most prominent players in the industry who are bringing them to their, to their classrooms. You know, this is an amazing time of cultural production and something that should be shared globally and, and in a much more equal way. Um, and, and this is, and, and I, think, I think the I Claudius kind of uh, parable is, is a very elegant way of describing a, a, a fundamental problem at play today. Uh, so you, you really, uh, you, you want to change the, um, the, the working of the system, but uh, it seems to me that you, you still, you're, in, you're attached or attracted to the old tools of the system. You criticize the galleries and now yourself you want to open a gallery. Isn't the contradiction? Life is full of contradictions. Um, I, think, I think, you know, in, in Turkey, when tourists come, what do they go and see? Uh, San Sofia or uh, Topkapı Palace, you know, in Istanbul. These are covered bazaar, you know, Grand Bazaar. They go see the ruins. They go see the the, yeah. the ancients. Oh, yeah. I think I I think I think the key to you know I I I I'm not a radical in that I call for the destruction of a system. I call for the rebuilding of a system. The system has great infrastructure. These people, and and all of the people in 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 the art business, people who run galleries, which is a very tough business, I think could run better galleries if they understood the system differently. Um, I think institutions could run better institutions if they sort of it differently. I think they could reduce the costs, decrease the risk. And there are a lot of different players in the gallery systems. They're small, as experimental, as mid-sized. I just call for essentially the system to be more flexible and dynamic and creative and open in their thinking. I by no means call for its destruction. I respect greatly the, the, the resolution, uh, the intellectual and economic activity that takes place broadly in the system. And that goes across the board. I just believe that the system is extremely reticent to, 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 to change. It's, it's highly inflexible, it's highly rigid. And I think, I, I think its rigidity should be, uh, should, should be questioned and become more dynamic. And many players have become more dynamic and have changed and have adapted. Um, so I think this is another kind of misattribution is, is, is any criticism of a system is not an attack of a system. It doesn't call for its destruction. It's, you know, in, in America, which is so politicized, you know, if you say one thing ab ab about, uh, you know, capitalism, you're a communist or a socialist, um, you know, you, you know, you can improve a, a capitalist system because maybe it's not running like a capitalist system. You know, I think these, 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 these radical reactions, if you say one thing, it means you're something else. It, 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 it's, 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 it's nuanced. So I have respect for galleries. I work with galleries all over the world. All my artists have galleries. One of my core functions and jobs is to make sure that my artists are represented, have gallery shows, and they do. Um, you know, we have uh, gallery shows of artists we work with constantly. Uh, we, 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 I calculate that 
we have about 65 solo shows of artists we work with and, and sort of, I don't use the word manage or represent, but quasi represent with, with artists all over the world. Petra Courtright has a show in Copenhagen right now. Shana McCoy, uh, who's a female artist from Minneapolis, just opened a show at Francois Gebali Gallery. Um, there's a show, I mean, it shows constantly, usually five, six, seven shows. There's artists and group shows all over the world. So I definitely, um, I think once galleries work with me, you know, they might be reticent, but they find that it's a very professional relationship. There's a lot of benefits they get. They sometimes don't have to ship the work internationally. If I, if I work with an artist in Turkey, the work is in LA, it gets delivered to them. Many of their risks are taken away. They don't have to return the goods if they don't get sold because the artist has effectively already been paid. So, so it de-risks them and lets them focus on, on their primary job, which is retail, which is customer-based, front-facing, communication facing. Um, I think one of the things I'm doing is sort of taking the art business and saying, well, you know, we've got this sort of artist producing, giving to the gallery, who's the retailer, no money to the artist because the gallery doesn't have money because they're spending money on art fairs. So imagine in the clothing industry, if you, if, if you had manufacturers and designers producing goods and consigning them directly to the retailer, there would be no money to produce the goods for the retailer to sell. Exactly the same thing in the art business. As the businesses scale become bigger, we need, we, we sort of need wholesalers and financiers and distributors to take care of and deleverage the risk that the galleries have also to do some of the work of development that artists require because galleries are so busy. They're at art fairs, they're running around. Artists in development and financing need a different process, just like manufacturers of clothing integrating with designers have a very different relationship, bringing out how to manufacture, how to design. So I think in the business requires specialization effectively especially for younger artists who who's 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 um emergent activities require a very different kind of specialization um so what you see with galleries is a lot of localization and support because it's convenient but we're so integrated today uh, you know there's so much exclusion just geographically because no longer are people just geographically isolated they're geographically isolated, but intellectually connected and culturally connected. It's a very strange thing. It's not, you know, it, it's, it's no longer like they're isolated both intellectually and geographically and from the market. Uh, the artist in, 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 in Iran or the artist in Indonesia or the artist in Africa can see what we're talking about, can participate, can look on Instagram, can see exactly what me living in like Los Angeles sees. But it's geog so I think I think it requires really different frameworks for how the business is done, and I'm trying to to build those frameworks uh, through sort of thinking about the system in a very different way. And it, it it's 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 often counterintuitive to how people are taught the business works. Um, and you know there there are so many systems of belief and thought in the world today that are being challenged. Uh, where there are incumbents who think a system works in a certain way. And it just doesn't because you just think it through. Um, and, and so I, I really enjoy these kinds of intellectual thinkers. I mean, I urge all of you to read uh, a book called The Deficit Myth by Stephanie Kelton, which is, uh, she's the leading modern monetary theorist in the world. Nothing to do with the art business. But if you read her book, you'll understand how two people, uh, Democrats, Republicans, leftists, writers, socialists, and capitalists, can think the same thing about a subject and both be completely wrong. I think in many respects, the art world is like this, is you can have people who have completely opposite opinions to each other, but yet they're still wrong. You know, there's a third option, there's a third path, and that third path is not explored because these two people are in opposition with each other, with a, with a, with a way of thinking. And, and the art business uh, needs to have these ideas uh, brought to the forefront. Actually, uh, as an economist, what I see is, is the following. Um, in the supply side, that means from the uh, from when we look at the uh, production, art production, we see uh, new schools opening uh, and every year new students, new graduates coming to the market. Uh, however, uh, the demand of arts does not increase at the same speed and that creates this disequilibrium 
uh, all over the places. And as the galleries follow their um, their own strategies, and each has, uh, the, you know, gallery business like a monopolistic competition. There are many galleries, and they have uh, having uh, each. Um, a small share and try to compete in, in they, they, they are price setters of their own artists as brands. But what we see is um, they, there's, there's talk to increase the, uh, the, the collector's base, especially in a country like Turkey. I mean, uh, everything depends on the you know, economic capacity, how many uh, billionaires you generate per year. So if if you have limitations in this in this perspective, uh, there's all, there's only one way to to solve this: to open up, to get to other markets, you know, get other uh, uh, other collectors uh, from other countries, and you know, uh, it's like um, you know, uh, improvement of international trade. So I think you're um, in this perspective. Uh, uh, I and you, we see. Uh, we see the same problematic and your solution is based on networking. Try to, uh, it's like a brain, uh, you know, how to make the neurons to work, create to create. I think it's much deeper than that. And it's economically a little, a, a little, a little deeper than that. There's a shortage of collectors and abundance of art. So what the gallery system does, it creates a false, a false idea that there is, that there is, that there is a shortage of the right art. So what they do is they go and they literally bomb all the other arts and say, this, this is rubbish because it's not in the canon because it hasn't been accepted. They basically nuke, nuke it so it can't access the system to create a false supply shortage. They basically are like the merchants in Rome who are like, if the grain doesn't get to Rome in the winter, then the grain's not here. Then we have a shortage of grain. But the grain's in Egypt, the boat, ro a boat, a boat right away. It has to do with price. It has to do with artists willing to sell stuff for very low prices in order to get enough capital into their studios because the arts don't need that much capital to their studios. I'm talking about hundred dollars, $150, 200, doesn't matter to your friends and family, instead of getting, you know, PDFs from young artists asking for $10,000 for works. And you're like, are you, are you kidding me? You don't even have a gallery. And this is common. And like my, so it has to do with price, which you can, which you can change and, and, and identifying new ways of actually building your collector markets and, 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 and I think price is one thing that that can by by lowering price, you can increase your your, your, your collector base. Um, we created a product in L.A., uh, a company called Creative Art Partners, which um, which you should look at. It's a very interesting company. Um, and we are an art. Uh, we, we, we actually rent art and lease art. Uh, um, and we this have three nice research topic. <laughs> yeah, I have and to we take and we have and we have three thousand works now in ninety six locations. Uh, we're currently exhibiting more work than the top ten galleries in the world, even in COVID. And it's a very distributed, diverse thing. And and we've done so by so dramatically reducing the price of accessing very good art. And we're not selling. We're not showing prints. And we're not like, oh, we can scale this by making shitty editions of famous artists. We're showing emerging contemporary art. That's great. And this is enabling us to to actually invest at scale in, in, in just the shipping and logistics of dealing with so much inventory. And it's a beautiful project. We're on Instagram. It's called Creative Art Partners. And, and we, we, we really have provided a professional product. And you can, you can rent a piece of art for, you know, including insurance, delivery, install for $150 a month, which is, which is a really complex logistics business, but something that we're building. This is, this is very interesting because I'm also Canadian and uh, uh, I know, uh, I don't know if you heard about very, very, the very, Art very Bank. familiar, studied it, very familiar. Uh, I, I worked in Art Bank uh, for a week to develop uh, and understand their uh, business. And I tried to promote this idea uh, in Turkey um, you know, the, the, their mentality is by emerging artists, uh, but it's not a commercial, uh, it's a, you know, it's a federal entity, it's not commercial. So their objective is to promote Canadian artists and try to shove them in, uh, in business and in, uh, in uh, embassies, Canadian embassies, um, and also government, uh, government offices. So the idea is very interesting. And uh, when, we, when we propose this idea, um, 
the problem is the you know scaling the transportation and insurance costs so no gallery uh, or you know not an entity was interested to uh, to to undertake this this business so far as far as I, I i examined there was rise art in london but they are no longer renting art but due to this i think scaling they they couldn't scale uh, to this extent to you know, to have even a break, even um, break, even um, point in their. So what? 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 Well, Rizard had not not good work. I mean, but that, that that's besides the point. Um, um, we we studied. I mean, I, Royal Bank of Canada's business, you know, buying and selling to municipal buildings required that they buy local art. The quality of which, uh, once you once you have that constraint, suffers greatly, um, because from a from a a federal government point of view, their mandate, because it's taxpayer based, is to buy local art. The Australian government has been more successful with their product, um, but also stymied by the fact that they buy local art. And um, I think what, what, what we're doing is sort of buying best of breed product, best of breed art, um, and providing a much better service because we're, 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 we're competitive with sort of but but yeah, I mean the scaling is 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 very very costly, and you have to make investments in in basic things, and the logistics of it is very complex. And most art dealers are not interested in making like thirty dollars a month on a piece of art, and you know it's a it's a tremendous. But you also need you know you also need the relationships and the development of of artists on the which which happens on my side on the Simcor side where it enables me to take more risk because I physically, even if I pay little for the work, just the physical logistics of it, I can somewhat offset those costs through this. So it allows me to basically be more open, but it's a very complex business, but something that we're building and, um, you know, we've been building since 2016. I don't talk about it too much, but it's, it's, it's very much a core part of, of, of what we do today. And this is interesting uh, also uh, related to my another question of mine, how to price uh, an, an emerging artist's work uh, who hasn't shown anything yet. Uh, and one suggestion, you know, coming from economics theory is, uh, you know, the relative price. You can only price something if you know the price of something else that you can compare. By putting so many works of so many artists from all around the world, you maybe you are able to uh, uh, you know uh, reach the, the right price for the uh, young I, artists. I, 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 I mean, you know, I, I, this is where I feel, and the art business doesn't, that when you work with me, you suddenly, I can charge a, a big price because I think that just like you sign with David Zwerner, he charged a big price. The art establishment doesn't like that because they sort of think that I'm not part of the establishment. I don't do institutional shows. I'm not David Zwerner or blah, blah, blah. I think differently. I think when I engage in your work, it changes the value of the work because I'm engaged, even though it's not, it, it, it's not because it has the same thing. So, so, so this is maybe my arrogance, my delusion, and a lot of people don't like it because they're like, well, the artist has had no museum shows. I think it's good. I've developed it. I think it deserves this price. That's with me. But I think young artists uh, selling directly, it's very different. Um, a lot of the times I don't do deals because I, a lot of the times I don't do deals because it's, it's too expensive and the artists go nowhere. I mean, th this sounds really crazy, but sometimes just giving the work away to get the logistics and the distribution costs, you know, literally if you're in Turkey and someone's just willing to ship your work and, and uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's your exposure. The beginning of, of an art career is about getting the work out there and exposing it. Um, yeah. And I think that, I, and I think that's something that, 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 artists are not are, are not are not taught you know it's it, it's something that's very very important 